So this is the active dining room. If Ruben Garcia could tell the future. Right now, all of our meals are provided by church groups. He'd know what to do with the massive warehouse he runs in El Paso. You had 500 cots here. It's one of several shelters where his advocacy organization cares for migrants who've just entered the U.S. Right now, we're paying $30,000 a month to rent this building. We're paying $5,000 a month for the showers. That's just the start. This facility is probably running at about $60,000 per month. This place can hold more than a thousand people. Right now, it's holding a couple dozen. That's because migrant flows at the southern border are way down, a dramatic change from the peak of the crush when Garcia started renting this space. I just want to go back in the, in the tech stream with ICE. So just so that you can see what, what, what life was like for us at that point. So now I am responding to both ICE and CBP. Please distribute your numbers as follows. Send 40 persons to St. Anthony's Church, 28 persons to Peace Lutheran in Las Cruces, 68 people to Centro San Juan. De that was then. But with the numbers down, it doesn't make sense to keep running this shelter. And closing it is a gamble. If the numbers change and we no longer have this building, I don't know what we're going to do. The Trump administration's Remain in Mexico policy forced thousands to camp out in neighboring Juarez while they await court dates on asylum claims. But activists had fleeting hope it would change. A federal appeals court recently overturned the policy only to quickly hold its own decision. That means the policy remains in effect for now. Are you able to have any visibility, any, any forecast at all of how things might change? God hasn't given me a crystal ball. I believe that they want to change immigration and refugee laws the way that we know it. Fernando Garcia runs the Border Network for Human Rights, a large activist organization here. He worries about the impact of a national policy in a town so interconnected with its Mexican counterpart. Here in El Paso, you will find that there, were, there are family members in just the other side of that fence, but they cannot be together because of immigration. I grew up in that neighborhood right there. Mario Escalante patrols that fence every day. He had just moved back to El Paso when migrant flows in this sector got overwhelming last year. How often do you see someone crossing right here or trying to? Uh, well, lately it hasn't been that often, but if you would have been here uh, last year during the same time frame, we probably would have already seen at least 50 or 60 people. You mean just in the time we've been driving or just yep, today? Just in the time we've been driving. And we've been driving along this route for what, a minute maybe? If that. He tells a story of a neighborhood along the border changed. In years past, it used to be a very active community, especially with uh, illegal activity because of its proximity to the border. Uh, but you'll see uh, it's changed so much with the infrastructure that we've added. The FBI says violent crime here was already dropping from 1990 to 2014. The El Paso Times examined the numbers and found El Paso's crime rate tracks with that of other major U.S. cities over the same period of time. And in fact, it was lower than the average the whole time. So the wall was not part of the equation. But the political messaging has contrasted that. El Paso, Texas used to have extremely high rates of violent crime. Now, immediately upon its building, with a powerful barrier, in place, El Paso is one of the safest cities in our country. A wall as a deterrent to crime isn't a message the president is likely to abandon this election cycle. For Mario, our main job is to apprehend, process, and turn over. The political messaging is no matter. This is the American Canal. When it's running, it's running very strong. And if you get caught up here in the gates, uh, most likely people are going to drown. Should people have to be that desperate? I don't know. I've never lived desperate. You see where desperation takes people because they're incredibly poor and um, they see no other option. Out here, it's a local fight. There is a constant dialogue. One where the sound bites aren't playing. The pundits don't matter. This country will welcome you if you just do it the legal way. What matters? are the lives impacted when policy shifts and knowing when that shift 
comes. Maybe this border is the new Ellis Island.